Uh, Mr. Motivator, good morning. <laughs> Good morning to you. Uh, yes, I've been around a long time. You have been a, a, years since I started. Around a long, long time, and I yeah. say that with love because yeah. you don't yeah. look it. And so, um, but Thank on you. a serious note, is there a crisis? Yeah. Do you think in what's going on with men? <clears throat> well, I think there's a crisis in general with the health of our nation, and I think it's because all too often government tend to put in a policy, and the next government comes in and they change that policy. I think in general what we need to do is to try and get the health of our nation to be totally ex-party. And that means you put in policy that applies to someone, whether in fact you're a male or female. Because I think the problem is true, that we men don't talk enough about their health problems. They don't sit down and have television programs that address the men's health need, needs and encourage them to talk about their mental state. Because I know the pressure for every male to be a father, to be a breadwinner, to be fit, to be healthy is on and it's even more relevant right now in terms of the economy, in terms of things, the way things are going. Yeah, because, I mean, I think that's a great sentiment about it being for everyone, but the issue is that specifically men, there is a massive issue with suicide and there is a mass massive issue with men, <coughs> for whatever reason, feeling like that's the only yeah. option that they have is taking their own life and obviously life expectancy in general among men being so much mm. lower um and so it does need some more targeted stuff wouldn't yeah. you say yeah but, but it's already started i mean there are so many initiatives out there to encourage men to talk about their problems but in general what we don't do in television terms we don't address the needs. you don't see men having a round table discussion about their health about um things that worry them you see programs for women you see women always around the table talking about those problems. And that should be the example we set. And we create the environment so that men feel easier to talk. But I say to every single male out there right now, if you're feeling close to the edge, if you're feeling like you can't go on, seek help. Start talking to people right on the phone, right? Or calling organizations on the phone where you don't have to show your face. The more you talk about it and practice talking about your issues, the better you will feel. But remember this. Every autumn, every single tree out there lost its leaves, but they still stand up tall. Because why? Because in the spring, we're going to flower again. So when there's no hope, when you feel that you can't go on, focus on that, but also focus on the fact that you are important. And in the equation of life, we need more of you around, right? And your family needs you, your friends need you. And looking after yourself physically is really important, but, by the way. But Physically is important. Because, I mean, you have been through your ups and downs in your career you've been on tv mm. every day then you know with the way in which mm. tv is it's brutal mm. then finding yourself dropped mm. i know that you've had real personal struggles you've spoken really openly about the really awful mm. death of your granddaughter when she died from mm. was it meningitis that that, mm. that that took her meningitis yes have yes. have you ever been the way you've just described sort of close to the edge yourself and had to give yourself oh. that talking to Oh, for sure. In fact, the messages I'm giving you now come from my life experiences, because the one thing I know as a male, the lowest point was when she died. The second lowest point was that it affected my health. There's a point at which I felt I just almost collapsed. All the energy, all the oxygen was taken out of the room. But what I realized is that unless I had a good cry, unless I actually let my emotions flow, I was never going to get better. And in fact, I sat down, I remember, with my wife and my youngest daughter. And I said, you know why I'm ill? You know why I don't feel right? It's because I've been strong for everyone else. Whilst everyone else was crying and letting their emotions out, I felt I had to stand up tall and be this proud figure. So what did I do? I bawled my eyes out. And the moment I did that, I felt so much better. But i tell you something, Christo, this is why I've started a roadshow going around the country. The first one's on the 24th of March in Nottingham free at the moment right in terms of your participation right it's important yes you will have to pay to get in and it's to try and get to people the information they need about their well-being so we do mindfulness we do meditation we do exercise classes because i know what saved me was exercise what it did was it relieved so all were the you, tension were you, and release if, if you don't mind me asking were you were you um suicidal not suicidal but you know what the thought crosses your mind Right, the thought crosses when listen, that wasn't the lowest point in my life. 
when I was homeless, when I had my sing when my daughter on my arm and we're sitting outside a homeless family unit, all kinds of thoughts go through your mind. The point is you so, don't let so those you, thoughts but you have those, manifest. You have those thoughts of, of, of perhaps, you know, what's the point in giving going up? On? Should I should I take up. should I take my own life? Yeah, I, you, you think about it, you know, and you go, well, you know what? I still hope. I still hope for tomorrow. I still feel that I can actually be better tomorrow. And if I keep on persevering and work hard, amazing things are going to happen in my life, right? And that's what I had to do, was did, talk did, to myself and realise my daughter needed me. Did you ever feel it when you'd had some of the ups and downs in television? Because I know that, again, you were... It, 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 it's incredibly difficult when you've been sort of on telly every day. I remember how... how I mean, you're still well-known now, but I remember how hugely famous you were uh, a, a couple of decades ago, and then suddenly that was almost taken away from you overnight, and that must have also led to some really dark thoughts. But, but, you know, yeah, of course you get dark thoughts, but I didn't think of suicide because I knew from experiences that basically if I kept working hard, that things would change, attitudes would change, and so I'm back with a bang. In fact, I'm back bigger and more popular than I ever was, and why? Because I've started talking about the issues I've had to deal with. Number one, I've actually opened up my doors and said to people, come in and make and realize that the vehicle I've arrived in, the Rolls Royce I've arrived in, which I don't have, by the way, wasn't how it was, right? It was walking around barefooted. It was going through all those ups and downs. And remember this, Christo, the difference between school and life. At school, you're taught a lesson and given a test. But in life, you're given a test which teaches your lesson. And all of us can learn from those life experiences. The important thing is, don't quit, don't give up, right? And if you feel close to the edge, seek help, talk it out. Sometimes your best friend is not the person to talk to. Someone you don't know is the best person to talk to. And that's the kind of platform I want to see in and, place. And do you, you guys on... Do you think it's more difficult for men because there are maybe these mixed messages from society nowadays that, you know, oh, it's really, really good to talk, but also, no, 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 you've also got to be quite masculine. And no, 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 we want you to be there and really strong for your family. But actually, no, 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 you should be able to cry as well. And there's all these different mm. messages that men particularly are given. Well, well, it is. And I think as time goes by and as society changes the rules, because at the moment, for example, if you go way back, we whistled at ladies. We complimented a woman, right? All of a sudden, removed some of that. Now we have to almost learned a new language of behavior, rightly so. And all these things are happening to us as men. And at the end of the day, I know that getting in touch with my emotional side was critical to my survival. Being able to cry when I'm happy, being able to cry when I'm sad, right, was really important. It didn't weaken me as a man. It made me stronger as a man. And so, therefore, we need to tell men that it's fine to ball your eyes out. It's okay. Is it? Is right? it? Guess what? You will empower other people when you do that. Is it difficult though, as well, being a, a, a man in the entertainment business and being around as long as you have? I guess you know it's really interesting what you just said about like maybe what was acceptable twenty or thirty years ago, wolf whistling yeah. or paying someone a compliment, yeah. navigating through all of that. Is is that something yeah. you're really conscious of now? That actually, you know, I really need to oh. think about my behaviour now. For sure, I'm conscious. But you know what? I work so much with older people. And with older people, I almost, at the start of my talk or my demonstration, what do I say to them? I say to them, this class is non-PC. And guess what happens? Every person in the room applaud me. Because they, 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 they grew up through all those things before. And they almost want a reminder of what it used to be like. So they want that little cheesy joke, that little suggestion. It doesn't mean anything. Total innocence. Listen, I've been around, thank God, for so long because I've never been inappropriate in the way I deal with the opposite sex. But there are things that they do to me, like I'll be taking a picture and they're pinching my butt. Now, if I did the same thing, I'd be in trouble, right? But I've never done it. But I'm also no, but, very I mean, conscious. So the joke about that, but also like, that yeah. does give a, perhaps a man who doesn't have your strength, that would be a completely mixed message for them. Because on the one hand, Absolutely men are, right. are, are quite rightly told that that's wrong. But on the other hand, it's sort of, you know, there is for some women, not all, but some women, there seems yes, to be a different yes. standard of behaviour, right? Yeah, yeah, but there is a naughtiness, right? And there's a cheekiness that we grew up with, which is really kind of lovely. And the fact it happens now still that, you know, I'm still in a picture, I'm doing a selfie, and they pinch my butt. I think it's great. I mean, yesterday, I mean, I got off the train and this guy ran after me. Are you Mr. Motivator? And he planted the kiss on my cheek. 
I mean, great. And it was a time when men would go, oh, no, a man kissing me, no. What's wrong with that? Love who you love. And if they love me, fine. But you know something, Christo? We have got to encourage men to look after their own health. We've got to encourage men to, to, men to seek help if they need help. And as I said before, and I know you don't want me to say, on the 24th no, of no, March... No, 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 that was going to be my... I promise me. you that was going to be my last question. So remind <laughs> us where will... If people want to see you, if people want to get some of this motivation yeah. in person, tell us all about it again. OK. Go online at mrmotivate.com. You will get clicked straight through to a free club you can join for exercise. And also, the 24th of March, we're in Nottingham, at the Belgrave Rooms. Come along. It's going to be brilliant. You have to get a ticket get your ticket and come along and let us inspire you because at the end of the day we all need that kind of guidance that kind of lift that kind of feeling good reminder that you're important and everybody the greatest gift you can give yourself right now is an independent healthier you and that's what i believe i should be providing people is the ammunition so they could do it all right really good to talk to you and really inspiring thank you